Hey everybody, it's Robot here, Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. Uh, we got all the parts covered, especially if you own a Vespa, and equally if you have a Piaggio or many other scooters as well. Um, well, the good news is we got this motor running. It idles really nice. That was part three, kind of bolted the carburetor back on. Um, I could see in this window, the oil level is really low. It's really cool that they had these sight glasses. This is something they should still put on the scooters, but that's another subject. Um, it was just old, old oil, and it's not good to run old oil. I could tell you that it's not good. In that sight glass, this is a good visual indication. You see that fog in there? That's actually moisture evaporating away. Now that the motor got hot for the first time in 15 years because I ran it for a while. So I definitely do not want to run it any further on this oil. So we're going to drop the oil. Probably want to have an oil filter on hand. And I'll tell you, if this doesn't look anything like the ET4 you have, that's because this is referred to as a pre-liter motor. It's a 125 original four-stroke Piaggio motor. And it's very different. Uh, if you're looking on how to do an oil change on a more modern Vespa or any automatic Vespa that's in, um, you know, sold in North America, I would suggest looking at my 11 year old video um, from 2010, I think it was 2009, 2011, somewhere in there of how to do an oil change on a modern Vespa. Pretty much the same steps. They haven't really changed it too much. Um, but this one's a little different. We're going to drop the oil, see what comes out of it. Uh, as with many Vespas, got to take it off the center stand. You can watch my uh, prior video that I did a couple weeks ago on how to uh, support a Vespa without a motorcycle lift, you know, that's used in a workshop like this. Uh, between using a homemade stand and also a scissor, a scissor lift style jack stand. Um, so I got the tires supported. I'm going to go ahead and raise the, uh, the scooter. I left this skirt off for a reason and we're gonna drop the oil. So I like this part of these older style motors. Uh, the new, all the newer motors, you drain the oil from the right side and it's a 24 millimeter wrench. These older ones got like a little brass drain bolt that takes a 17 millimeter wrench and comes out of the oil pan. It's a little different than with a, a, a change to after this motor. Again, this motor was like pretty much 1999 was the last year of this motor pretty short-lived motor. The oil looks pretty clean, but with that moisture in there, that kind of concerns me. I wouldn't even, um, I think I'd do probably an oil change and then we'd probably ride, you know, get it to a point where I can ride it, maybe put 50 miles on it and then drop the oil again, which would be a good idea to do. So uh, they do have an oil drain O-ring on any of these drain plugs. It's a larger size on the newer motors. So definitely want to find a corresponding O-ring. Uh, modern Vespas all use their newer Vespas, 2001 and later, used the 285, 239, 238, something like that. A very popular part. Anytime you do an oil change, I'd have one of those O-rings on hand. So let it drain all out. Of course, with the motor warm, it drains out pretty readily. So clean the drain plug. They got this really nice looking brass drain plug. Drop the O-ring right in there. I got a new O-ring that sits perfectly in the groove. Um, and after this drains a little bit, you know, it's just dripping. I think that's probably low enough. You could tip the motor. Like I said, I think we'll drain the oil again once we know this scooter's 100% up and rolling. Thread that drain plug in. Get the oil off it. And these motors, they don't even hold the same capacity. They hold, uh, I think the oil change uh, capacity is 850 milliliters. So, you know, a little less than a quart. And go ahead and tighten that. You don't need to get too crazy on it. It's just the O-ring that seals. Uh, oil looks pretty nice. There's no metal in it. That's a good thing, but it's ancient oil in there. And eventually we'll probably look into this oil leak. It might be the rear end or it might have an oil leak inside the um, transmission. Uh, something else to look at. Another thing that's very unique to these scooters, they got a um, no dipstick there. They do have an oil, a cartridge oil filter that's like right on this little guy here. So have the oil pan handy. It's pretty messy to change those little oil filter cartridges. Still have those in stock at Scooter West, even though the scooter wasn't really sold in North America. Uh, 
just a, a little Easter egg, this motor was officially used in, in Aprilia product. The original Mojito, which is kind of a retro classic, neoclassic looking uh, scooter with like big handlebars, it used this motor in North America before like the ET4 and LX came here. Well, it was a similar time, but they were still using this old motor design. Um, I kind of like this motor just because it's a little different, but uh, the newer motors are, uh, they made so many more of them. Uh, they were uh, vastly simplified and the transmissions are a lot stronger in them. So overall, the newer motor is a lot better design. All right, so I have an oil filter ready to go. We still have these ready available. OF7 dash, I think we have HF and dash RMS, two different brands of them. It's just a little cartridge filter. They're not very convenient compared to the, the newer Vespas that have a spin-on filter. Uh, this cover, you gotta take extra care because we do not have the O-rings. It's a specialized O-ring for this cover. And back in the day when I played with these a lot more, I found they never these covers never sealed all that well. And it's, what a messy design. Look at that, it just drips all over the place. Newer ones are so much better. <laughs> and keep, keep some pressure on this filter because there's a spring-loaded, that little cartridge in there. It was cool because we ran the motor enough to circulate the oil through that old filter. But just like the air filter, they do deteriorate so that I definitely don't want to leave an old filter in there. I'm sure it was replaced not too long ago. Or, well, quite a long time ago, but, you know, the, um... So that's the old one. There's going to be a spring in there and you can see the O-ring. So I'm going to try to clean all this up the best I can. That O-ring does have a little, little bit of pressure on it. That's a good thing or a little bit of roundness to it. So it's likely to seal up just fine. I'll probably just try bolting it all on and hope for the best that it seals up. We can put some grease on it. So the cover, the spring, and the cavity that bolts up to you. So clean all those parts out. Uh, we'll put the new filter in place. It only goes in one direction. There is an O-ring in the back of that housing as well. See, it doesn't really want to stay. We'll put a little grease on this. So grease is always your friend. It kind of holds things in place. And I would always recommend having uh, Scooter West part number grease. This Maxima grease is really thick compared to like regular automotive grease, but it does uh, break down with the oil. So it's not going to damage anything. You know, having a little bit of grease in the um, lubrication system. Actually, I did the wrong size. Put a little grease on there and it's gonna just magically hold in place. Look at that. And then a little grease on the spring. And now that holds in place. Now the covers all ready to go. Again, grease is your friend. We'll put a little grease on that O-ring there. Help, uh, hope for the best that will seal up. If not, I'll have to either get a replacement O-ring or um, somehow obtain one. Or I can also possibly uh, just could have carefully put silicon sealant. That's kind of dangerous on an oil filter housing because it can clog up parts of your oiling system and that's a really bad situation. Pretty much if you kill this motor, you might as well just throw it away. <laughs> I'd put a more modern leader motor. Well, maybe that's a future video because there's not too many parts available for this older motor. It's a pretty short-lived early Piaggio design. So I got the filter started the two screws in there. What a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the oil in it. Uh, normally you put a funnel in there, they got a nice access, but here at the shop I have, well, I'll actually meter it out. I'm gonna uh, fill up a bottle with about 850 cc's of oil. The nice thing is you have a nice visual indication of the oil level, so. And it, like I said, it makes a big mess. There's oil all over the place on here. You could use like a brake spray cleaner to clean up all the residual oil, especially if you want to make sure it's not leaking. That kind of washes it down. Be careful not to get this kind of stuff on painted surfaces. Um, but there we go. Pretty good. Okay, time to put, um, dispose of the oil correctly and we'll put uh, refill the motor with them some oil and we'll start it up make sure our level's still good so it looks like I have about 800 milliliters 800 cc's of oil right there uh, metered out in this this thing 5w40 full synthetic 
Um, we have several different brands of that available at Scooter West. Uh, and it's pretty much going to take pretty much all of it. Okay, so let's slow down. It's coming right up to the top. But don't forget, the oil filter is going to uh, absorb some of that capacity. So we'll pour maybe another 25 cc's. We'll bring it right up to the top right there. And that's probably a good starting point. You know, don't always trust the markings of how much the engine will take. There's some variations in the castings when they manufacture these motors. So I'm gonna try to jump up here and we'll start it, run it, make sure it builds up oil pressure. Probably run it long enough to make sure it's not dripping oil out of that oil filter housing. That was a common problem with these things. And let's see, moment of truth here. So you can see it drops way down in that sight glass, and that's pretty normal. All right, we know it's built oil pressure. Give it a couple little revs. Doesn't really want to rev up too much because the tire is on the ground. You know, it's engaging the clutch. I think it's run just enough. Build up pressure, get oil where it needs to get it. And just let it sit there for a little bit, and you can see the oil level comes right up. I love these uh, oil sight glass. That's probably my favorite feature on the whole bike. Um, something you can easily add to the newer scooters. Obviously, it's going to cost you because it's an aftermarket part. Uh, just makes for a visual quick indication of your oil level. Um, and pretty much that's your min, that's your maximum. And I'll probably let it settle, probably come right up to the max, and I think we'll be good. All right, well, thanks for watching. Um, kind of a simple task of just changing the oil, but definitely something that's very important if you're resurrecting a scooter that's been in, in long-term storage without use. Um, until next time, see you next week, and I'll have more videos to come on refurbishing this 1997 Vespa ET4-125. A uh, little bit odd because it's not something sold here in North America, but most of the stuff translates over to any other scooter that you may be uh, wrenching on to get going. Until next time, Robot here, Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com.